well, with both the parents as well as the congregation when we come to this place. The first is that this is a, a, an opportunity to thank God for the new one in your, in your family. And uh, in Psalm 127, 3, it says, Behold, children are a gift of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. And so this is a reward to you folks, uh, both you, Chris, and Sean, having a, a son born into your family uh, in addition to the daughter that you already have. The second thing is, is that it's the dedication of the child. And there's two things that we want to emphasize on this. First is that it's, accept, it's to accept God's will for the child's life over what your own will is for the baby. That's hard, as you know, sometimes, to accept what God wants to do. But we're dedicating this child to God and to his service, and, and it's kind of setting our will back a little bit and saying what God wants. And the example of that is Hannah who desired a baby for so many years, and then Hannah wound up saying, God, if you will give me a baby, I will dedicate him to you. And if you recognize in 1 Samuel, Hannah then took, when the baby was weaned, took the baby to the temple, and he lived at the temple and was raised totally in God's service for the rest of his life. And while we don't expect him to come here to church and spend the rest of his life with me uh, doing the job but, uh, and, and ministering to people, uh, this is a way in which you just say whatever God wants for him is your will. The second one is the promise before these people and before God that you'll nurture and teach this child about by precept, teaching, and also example in your own lives into how he should follow God in his own life. And there's a couple of verses, Deuteronomy 6, 6, and 7 says, For these words I'm commanding you today, they shall be on your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. So basically all through life, whatever you're doing, whether you're at, the, at a, uh, you know, the table, whether it's devotions, whether you're working, you're going to be an example to God. And they'll be just as lively as this one here, and that's fine. Huh? Yes. The third thing is it's a rededication of you as the parents. You're rededicating yourselves to God. You dedicated yourselves to God at your wedding and said we're going to be committed to him to follow what he wants in our lives. But it's a rededication of you in the sense that you're going to raise your family, your son and your daughter, to follow God. And then lastly, it says uh, in Ephesians, it says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. So there's a special responsibility for fathers in this to make sure that we raise our children in a proper way. And while moms spend most of the time with the children, we are the ones that are leaders of the family, and ultimately it's our responsibility, your responsibility, Sean, to make sure that your children are raised in a way that pleases God. The third thing is that uh, beside the rededication of the parents is also a commitment by the congregation because they're part of our body. And as they raise a child, then it's our commitment to then wind up uh, being able, willing to support them in whatever they do. Don't worry about her. She'll be fine. Okay? And uh, that's what children do, you know? They're, they act like children. And so um, it's a commitment by you to say, yes, as Sean and Chris raise this child, you're going to support them. So we'll talk, we'll have a, a time of uh, making some vows before God, but before we do that, I'd like to just talk about what's in a name, because a name's very important, and we name our children uh, a very special thing, and, and uh, Jason David Lee's his three names. Jason is named after you as his middle name, so he's going to look to you as his father, and he's got your name, for, in fact, he's got two of your names forever, the rest of his life, and um, his, the, the name actually, as I looked up on the internet, uh, means healer or cure. And hopefully as he grows, he'll be a healer and uh, someone who will help others be cured from their sins by sharing Jesus Christ in their lives. So that's an awesome, awesome privilege. He's going to watch you, Sean, to be his example. The second, his second name is David. And the word David means beloved. And his namesake is making a lot of noise in the back of the room right now as uh, we're having a, a dedication because he's named after David, uh, Jonathan David in the back of the room. And actually he's a JD and uh, named after Jonathan David Day, JD also. And uh, Jonathan had 21 years to give to the Lord Jesus Christ and he lived, I would have to say, most of those moments for him in, in a very real way. And uh, until God uh, put, allowed this to take place and him to be in a different phase of life for the last 10 years, um, I think of the, the phrase in um, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, where it says, fixing your eyes on Jesus. And in Jonathan's Bible, in the front fly leaf, it says three times, fix your eyes on Jesus, fix your eyes on Jesus, fix your eyes on Jesus. And this is what we trust that he will also be willing to do, uh, Jason David, that he'll fix his eyes on Jesus as time goes along. Um, David is... As I looked at the scriptures, it's only used once. You don't find anybody, I can't think of anybody else in the scriptures named David beside King David. 
And so it's like that name got used once and was such a sacred, such a great name that nobody ever else named their name King David, their son David. But David is a result of a love story beginning back in Ruth and then all the way through to King David, who had a lot of trials in his life, but yet he wound up succumbing to them all. And every king after David was judged by did they meet the standard that David held. And we trust that that would be true for him. And the last name is the name of Lees. And of course, uh, that's, he's taking the name of a godly father, you, Sean. And he's going to have your name and he's going to represent the Lees. And it's gonna be, he's going to do what he does because he's a Lee. <laughs> and he's one of those. He's going he's to do that right. And um, it's important that we have fa- godly fathers, also grandfathers, great-grandfathers, grandmothers, great-grandmothers, and so forth. And so as we close this part, before we do our vows, I'd like to just share two verses with you. And they come from my father and my mother, which is his grandfather, I guess we great-grandfather and great-grandmother. And uh, his, his great-grandmother's favorite verse or life verse was Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet it's not I, but it's Christ living in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And his grandfather's verse comes from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 9, verse 23. It says, If anyone wishes to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. And that's what we look forward to this young boy doing, is to grow up and have a great heritage of leading others toward Jesus Christ as he follows both of your examples. Now, I'd like to ask a few questions here. And the first question is for you. Sean and Carissa, is it your desire today to dedicate him to the Lord and to raise him in a way that honors God. Yes. I would ask all the grandparents, aunts, uncles, and other family members, and if and godparents, to please stand, if you would. And I ask you this question: Do you promise to support Sean and Carissa in this endeavor, and in their absence, to carry out the vows they are making here today before God and this people? I'd ask the whole congregation to rise, and I'd ask you to. Say, we will, if this is your intent, will you encourage and assist Sean and Carissa in raising uh, Jason David to love and serve Jesus? Okay. You may all be seated. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bring before you Jason David Lees, we ask that you might just watch over him and bless him in his life. We commit him to you, recognizing that you may use him for your glory in any way. Sean and Carissa, bring him before you, asking that you use him in a mighty way for whichever purpose you have. We pray that he might always follow you and that he might follow the example of his parents. As he goes through life, make his commitment be one that will not only follow you, but may he lead many others to you regardless of where he lives or how he, uh, how he winds up in skills and abilities and, and mental capacity, we ask that as he moves forward in life, that we, you, we use him mightily, whether in the, at a work or job, at school, or in uh, your ministry. We pray that you might truly bless him and bless Sean and Chris and give them your wisdom as they bring him up, that he may truly exemplify the words of the Proverbs that say, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will never depart from it. We ask this all in your son's name, Jesus. Amen.